party all right hello internet i'm michael Slezak from tvline.com i am here with american idols mk Noblet. thank you for being with us today yeah we are conducting a google hangout we are attempting to master this technology we're not going to look at the camera while speaking to each other because readers have said they were freaked out by that so are you freaked out by this by this format or are you ready no, to roll? No, I'm not ready. Let's okay. We're gonna talk about your idle journey. You can see I have three pages of questions. I usually I'm usually across the table where people can't see the questions you can see, but don't don't because, Okay, cool. <laughs> I wanna talk about you being the first openly gay contestant on idle before we start talking about music. Okay. Get that stuff out of the way. Um, had you been an idol watcher prior to your season? No, actually I wasn't. Um, I had seen maybe a few episodes and I did look it up obviously before I went to Hollywood Week. Um, but other before that I hadn't been a very You weren't glued to your enough. set every Wednesday and Thursday night for know. the last thirteen years. Did you know that there had never been an openly gay contestant on the show? Were you no, aware of that? I didn't know that. Um, I didn't know that at all actually. I knew that there were gay contestants on the show, but not <laughs> I didn't know that there were openly And that no one had ever said it. Yeah. Which which to me is almost confounding. It's like yeah, it's you know <laughs> But I I mean I understand at the same time. It's like I, I think like the other people, the other gay contestants on the show's perspective was that they didn't want people to like think of them just as the gay person on Idol. They wanted them to think of like them as another like solid contender. But uh, for me, I read it more as like this is who I am. If, like America's gonna get to know me. You know did you debate at all before you went in for the Green Mile and mentioned that to the judges, or did you just think, of course, like I'm not going through the season without this coming up yeah. anyway? So well, I mean, it was pretty obvious anyway. And then also they said, like they asked, like what makes you different from the other contestants? That's one of the reasons. And then also they 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 encourage you to uh, have America get to know you, so that their fans and 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 everybody can uh, you know feel like connected to you, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. And I think that that's the one of the main things about me that I'm very proud about is my sexuality. So. I found it disingenuous when some people responded by saying, like, why do we need to know, or how is this, you know, why does she think this is anyone's business? Because yeah. to me, over 13 seasons, we've seen people talk about, you know, spouses being hospitalized, their children, yeah. their engagements, their marriages, their divorces. It's just a part of yeah. who you are. It's Everyone part of your has life. A story. We really don't need to know, you don't need to know any of <laughs> everything they say on American Idol. All you really need to know to do the voting and all that is to hear someone sing. But I mean, the, the, Point was of, of saying everyone's story, like their family history or their sexuality, like all of this stuff is is important because then their voters can understand who they are. And I think that's actually really important. Right. And we didn't have you sit, sitting tearfully by a river, recounting yeah, exactly. in maudlin detail while strings played. You're exactly. just very matter of fact about it. So, as an openly gay internet person, I I commend and found it very exciting. So we're going to stop talking about that. We're okay. going to start talking about music. Where were you at musically and in terms of your career prior to Idol, and what made you think season thirteen? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it this year. Well, starting off, I went, I auditioned because my aunt Betsy, who lives here in New York, she she just said she she's a big watcher of the show. And she she just said to try out. And I was like, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> okay, and I did. Sounds like part of your general like chilled out philosophy on life. Like, yeah, Aunt Betsy suggested. Yeah. Why not? That was that was how that went. And um, you were in school at the time? I was in school, yeah, at uh, City College of San Francisco. I was previously at Portland State. And were you you know, were you feeling like maybe this would, would help you take your music career to the next level? Is that was that your main reason for doing it? Or was it just like literally Aunt Betsy? Um, originally, I mean, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, it ended up, I mean, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, I was in school for firefighting for a little bit. I, I thought about maybe being a firefighter. I, I wasn't very far along in it. Or, okay. But um, I I thought had that idea. But, I mean, my, my main thing has always been music. Um, and I would have loved to be a musician. I didn't know how to go about it before Idol. Now that I have a better perspective about it, now that's the only thing that I, I have my heart set on doing. Um, but I think that idol really helped me out with that. Okay. So you go into the audition. You're not someone with years of experience watching the show. How do yeah. you settle on If I Were Your Woman as as the song to introduce you to the world? Actually, this is actually a really great story. I was outside of the ballpark in San Francisco for the very, very first audition, not even in front of the judges. So okay. The very first audition. And um, they... 
<laughs> I was just standing along with these, a couple of people that I had never met before who were also auditioning, and we were like, oh, let's sing each other our songs. And I was like, okay, and I sang this other song. I don't even remember what it was. I had a different song, a uh, completely different song picked out. And I sang it, and then I was like, I just had this thought in my head. I was like, but wait, maybe, I mean, this would be a good one too. And I just sang it. I haven't sang that song in, in a long time. And they were like, yeah, definitely do that one. So I just changed my song like a few minutes before the, before, or before the audition. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. You get to Hollywood Beach, there's the um, airport, airplane hangar of doom round. What was that experience like? You obviously didn't know that this was a new thing, yeah. but I imagine still being shuttled to an airport hangar and being like... That was crazy. Um, it was just, it was so crazy to like, just get somewhere and then possibly have to leave. Like, um, it felt pretty pointless <laughs> like for, for a little bit. I was kind of like, this sucks, like, this is so mean. But then um, I, I didn't really feel that bad about it for very long because I GPS the hotel on my phone. <laughs> so I, I knew where we were going. Really? Yeah. They didn't show that on TV. No, they didn't. <laughs> so you were on the bus where you like, did you tell people near you, like, we're, we're, we're safe, or did you just think, I'm keeping this uh, myself? I think I told the person next to me, but I, I didn't really. Like, they were like, I think I was pretty sure because I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go to this hotel. But also they were like, well, we might just be going a roundabout way. Yeah, this is in 24. Exactly. It's American Idol. That's my favorite TV show. It's <laughs> yeah. See, producers in the future, you now know to take contestants' technology away from them if you want to exercise some psychological torture. <laughs> um, okay, so you get to the group rounds, you do Royals with Brianna Oakley. That was a pretty cool moment, and I think it, it sort of identified you two as a couple of contestants to watch. Um, yeah. I how did you get to that point and, and make it good? Was there a lot of, like, tears and, you know, shaking in the bathroom prior to that, or were you really guys pretty that. relaxed? I didn't really know that song very well. And actually, there, it was really hectic. Group, groups was the probably the worst part of Idol. <laughs> like, it was horrible. It was so hard. Uh, Brianna definitely stole the show on that one. It was definitely great for her. Like, she was definitely the one to watch on that. Um, <coughs> sorry. I'm a little cold. Um, but then, uh, it, was, it was so hectic. I was actually in a whole different group originally. And then we broke off, I went to a whole different group, and then went back to part of the group that I was in before with Brianna. And so um, it was hectic. It was so crazy. Did you get sleep the night before, or were you one no, of those No, I got three hours of sleep, really. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not going to be in a group. You're not looking to explore. I would love to be in, in some sort of group, but just not, like, in that way. <laughs> <laughs> not manufactured a couple hours prior under extreme exactly. stress. Your final solo round you did, Ed Sheeran's the 18. Mm -hmm. Um, had that been a song that you previously covered? It was. Yes. I, um, Kevin Hammond um, is this really amazing uh, performer. He's from New York. Um, but he, he's, uh, he's a pretty good guy. He's a pretty cool guy. And he uh, takes a bunch of really awesome songs and covers them and makes them really cool. And I actually did his version of 18. Okay. And I've been covering that song for, since it came out for like a year now. Um, and uh, it's been one of my favorite songs to play in shows for a long time. After that aired, I felt like you sort of got really on people's radar, both because you, you know, you talk about being very obviously gay, which got you some buzz, but also musically, you were sort of stylistically different from a lot of the other women in the competition. Yeah. Did you start feeling at that point like, okay, if I survive this bizarre rush week thing and actually even get a chance to say, mm -hmm. maybe I've got a shot to go far in this competition, at what point did you start thinking about that? Um... I, I don't know. When did I start thinking that I was going to make it to a tour? I have no idea. I, I mean, everything just kind of hit me by surprise. Like, of course I wanted it the whole time. Like, <coughs> so I was like putting, I was putting everything into it, into it the whole time. But um, also, you kind of, you can't really get ahead of yourself. I mean, personally, I feel like um, I, don't, I don't like to do that because I don't want to get my hopes up um, right. or be disappointed um, when something doesn't happen. And, um, I think the way to achieve bigger goals is to have little ones along the way. Um, so like, uh, so like, get to the top ten. My my goal that was my goal. My next goal, like I had little ones first. It was just to make it to the judge round, then to make it to Hollywood Week, then to make it through Hollywood Week. You know, each little step of the way had its own little goal. And so I never really um, had the opportunity to look too far ahead. Mm -hmm. um, you you needed to clear the top ten yeah, hurdle prior to exactly. looking too much further forward. 
And for Rush Week, you did all of me, which I think we were sort of thinking of you as like a folksier, yeah. acoustic-y type contestant. I'm not sure John Legend would have been an expected choice, but it yeah. really worked. I might have, I, if, if you ask my opinion, I would say that was your best performance on the show. It was kind of your so breakout true. moment. What made you choose all of me? And it seemed very personal. It seemed like very specific, like you were feeling those lyrics. Yeah. So talk about that a little too. Well, um, I think I chose all of me because um, I had heard it in Hollywood Week, just other contestants had done it, and I never heard it before. And um, I've covered so many John Legend songs. Okay. Um, that it's ridiculous. Like I, I love John Legend, and I love his music. Um, I've been like glued to my headphones listening to that new album. Um, yeah, I'm obsessed with it. Um, okay. So he, he's just, I've always covered his songs, and it was just sort of, um, it was just fun, one that stuck out to me. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure why. I just heard it, and I was like, I have to sing this song. And I feel like that was maybe as much stress as a contestant could go through, because you guys didn't even know if you were going to be called down. Yeah. Then your name gets called, then you've got to rush down to the stage and, yeah. and do it. But I feel like you maybe excelled more than almost any of the other women that week. You might have you might have given the best performance or one of the best performances of that night. Did did the pressure get to you and you just didn't show it as much, or did you just somehow find a way to get beyond that stress? Um, I don't know. I just I <laughs> I've heard so much that I that I stay very like angry faced. Um, <laughs> I I'm not sure why. I <laughs> like I'm not an angry person at all. Um, okay. I I don't know. Um, but I just I just kind of like I don't know. I just kind of like like to clear my head. I think meditation is important. Just clear my head. I never like to think too much or get too far into things. Uh, so I tend to just do things and and just like let them go and you know feel the energy. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Positive energy. Positive energy. No anger here. No. Your resting face is just a little serious stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I guess so. So you get to the top thirteen. You did Alan Stone's Satisfaction. This is a song I did not know. I don't think the average idol viewer would expect yeah. to hear Alan Stone. Did you have any internal debate or any de debate with like with Randy as the mentor or with any of the producers about is this song too obscure? Will people dig it? Or did you just know you had to do this song? Talk about that. Over. Well, I think I kind of chose it because I'm choosing music that I like to listen to. I'm I'm not going to sing something that I don't that I don't like, um, uh, even if it is better for the show. Um, the the competition to me. Um, of course, I would have loved to win American Idol, but I don't think I would have loved to win American Idol if I wasn't singing songs that really showcase like who I am. Um, Interesting. Even if I didn't have the best performance doing those the songs that I love, at least I got to perform a song that I love. Mm -hmm. um, so winning, of course, was the ultimate goal. But um, it, it it was I did the songs that I loved, and that, that's kind of what matters. In your brain, if you ended up winning the show on songs you didn't have any affinity for. Did you fear, like, I'll be stuck doing them for the rest of my life, or, well, yeah. or people will think this is what they're going to get when they buy my album, and it's it's not me? Yeah, at a certain point, like, every, uh, now, at, at this point in the competition, they record and put on iTunes every every song, and I wouldn't have wanted, if I had, say, I had won the competition, I would have had almost a full album <laughs> of the covers of songs that I was like, oh, yeah, this is the song that I did on Idol. <laughs> like, it wouldn't have been like, check this out, this is so cool, I got to record this awesome song. <laughs> So, I mean, I cut, that's kind of how it was cut. With satisfaction, the judges said to you, like, they liked that you sort of upped stage presence and you moved around, but they felt like in between moments you sort of drifted. How did you feel watching it back? Did you feel like that was a fair assessment? And do you, what do you yeah. feel like you learned about your own performance style and comfort <laughs> level on the stage? I feel like I'm a really awkward performer. Um, I, I haven't, like, I haven't really mastered how I'm performing yet. Um, I'll get there. But I think... Um, it's just it's so like new to like be on a stage like that and doing those things like um, I went to a performing arts high school mm -hmm. um, where you just stand and, and sing pretty you know that's like a recital <laughs> right. like you just kind of you don't really I mean you do things obviously it's not just like boring but like for the most part our performances were in a choir on risers so, like you can't you know you're not moving in <coughs> through the audience yeah so I was used to that for the past like four years and then I um, I performed a little bit, but I think that that kind of prepared me to do that, and then I, I, I had a hard time, like, getting out of that. Mm -hmm. um, so so I think that was, like, a little bit of a of a fail on my part. <laughs> um, but I think it'll get better, especially through tour. I think it'll be a great step for that. And the audience on the live shows is a little scary, because there's 
there's a lot of like swaying out, yeah. of, out of time <laughs> or swaying in multiple different rhythms. So that's you know I would yeah. be I would be hesitant to move too close to the swing. I love the claps that are like on the beat, but they're like. <laughs> Those are the greatest. <laughs> Did you consider, so you get that far in the competition, and I think in previous seasons we've seen some contestants, especially ones who can play guitar, sometimes will radically rearrange a song we wouldn't expect to hear yeah. them do. Had that occurred to you at all, like let me take something, some poppy thing, and, and turn it into an MK song? Um... Yeah, I mean, it definitely did, and I think that if I had uh, if I had, had the chance to sing, like, songs, like, I, I listen to very, like, obscure music that no one's really heard of. At least the people have heard of it, but not the idol viewers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if, I had, if I had done those songs, um, I think that maybe, maybe that would, things would have gone a little differently. Um, I do love the pig song, and I did want to put my spit on it, but, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. So tell me about Drops of Jupiter. Was that was that, you know, just something that was on a list where you picked it out, or was this one that you'd been forming in the past? How did you settle on that one? And and when you landed in the bottom three, like how scary does that get at a certain point to, you know, in terms of your confidence and in terms of being on stage and sort of discovering yourself as a performer? Well, part of it you wanna part of it you think um, I mean for like for the most part, um, you want to say that. <laughs> uh, well, that week, was, uh, drops of Jupiter. That week was what songs am I do poem, right? And Train is from the Bay Area, and uh, so that was a big one. I also just like that song does just remind me of home. I, I have no idea why. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned it at home. It was one of the first times I played the piano. Uh, I I was in love with that song for so long. Um, uh, so that's I think that's why I picked it. Um, it was on the list of, of songs, um, and that one kind of just stuck out, I think, to me. Um, also because once you already sing a song, you obviously can't sing another song by that artist. Right. And I think um, there was other songs on there that I could have done, but I had already sang them. So that's how you settled on it. Yeah. You kind of had a comeback with <coughs> Movie Week and To Make You Feel My Love. Mm-hmm. Did you feel going into that week like, I have to like, really give a memorable killer performance here, or I'm yeah. going to be out, how much pressure was there, and how much debate went into what song you picked that week? Well, it was pretty quick. Like, I looked through the list and, and didn't see it um, a couple times, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Like, I love to sing, this is so complicated, this, there's so many songs on here that I, like, don't want to sing, really. <laughs> um, and and then I saw that one, and I just knew. I sang it in a recital in high school. Um, I love that song. Um, Harry Connick Jr. was my goal for like to like to please in that week because he was the one who said that I it looked like I didn't want to be there mm-hmm. and um and so I I sang it to him to prove that I wanted to be there which I think did get across I went up to him um, and sang to him and all the judges but specifically him um, it was also from a movie that he started in, so that was right. also a big part of it. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that was that was that week. And that was my follow-up for you, because you actually did really move in almost up to the judges, yeah. and I was wondering if that was like <laughs> accidental or if that was very specifically, so it was pointed at them. It was very specific um, uh, towards Harry, because he was the one who said that it sounded like I, I don't want to be there, and it's to make you feel my love, you know? And, right. Yeah. And as, as, as a performer on that stage, getting up there every week, I mean, Harry has been pretty tough, and I think all the judges have been fairly critical and specific about what they're looking for, about what they think contestants could be doing better. Did that bother you at all? Did you invite it and feel like this is a good thing for me so I can keep learning? What What's your response as a as an artist up there getting that feedback? Um, I, I, I like I like all their feedback, even if it's harsh. I mean, if they didn't like us, we wouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, uh, it's important, I think, to like Remind yourself that, so that you know that like it's not that they don't like you; it's that they're trying to make you a better artist. And I think that's like really important to be telling yourself. Yeah, that week we also got like a a really blinged out outfit from you. Was it fun to play around with wardrobe? Yeah, I I like wardrobe. I mean, I I have a weird style anyway. Like I I tend to be like pretty out there with my style anyway. So um, I I don't think they like really dress me very very different Mm -hmm. from what I usually wear. Maybe a little bit um, more dressed up, but not very different. 
<laughs> the only thing I think that was like very different was the makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, but that didn't bother me either at all. Actually, it, I think it bothered a, lo- a lot of my fans <laughs> more than it bothered me. Really? Yeah. So your final week on the show, you get to do the pink song, perfect. And midway through, there's obviously you kind of lost your place or something happened. What specifically happened to you to to throw you off? Um, I didn't know that much. We we don't really have like too much rehearsal time. That that was always like a little um, thing. It um, I had always fumbled on that part, and I just think it was probably a poor song for us, um, which is unfortunate, but it happens. What goes through your brain as this is happening? Do you even have time to think like, oh, or, or do you just like let me find my place? How do I get there? Yeah, just you just sing. You just you just keep going. That's all. I mean, as long as you don't give up or like stop, you know. Right. Which would be. I don't think we've ever seen that happen. So. Future idol contestants, please don't just stop. I want to see that. Um, you get to results night. Did you kind of have a sensation that that it was going to be you that week? Yeah. And did you feel like it's still probably too early to use the judges' save, save, or did you think maybe I've got a shot at this? Um, I I mean, you never really know about the save. Like maybe, maybe not. I mean, I I didn't know. I didn't think they would or they wouldn't. I had no idea. Um, and. Yeah, I, I was pretty sure it was it was gonna be me because everyone had to go at the phone at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um. So coming out of this experience, you know, you've obviously gotten a world of exposure. Yeah. Being in front of you know an audience of of ten to fifteen million people per week, you know, and coming from not having had a lot of previous experience, what have you learned? And you know, we've had we've seen you know Randy mentoring you guys. We've seen the judges giving you specific feedback, like what, what's the best advice you've t- gotten from this experience? Um, I kind of actually appreciate that Harry said that it looked like I didn't want to be there because it, it sort of brought it into, into perspective. And I think I needed it to be so like blatant and like out there because um, now before every performance I'm definitely going to like say, you know, like prove you want to be good, like, show it in your face, you know, smile, like, do these things. And so I think that was important to hear. Do you feel like, you know, I think at one point he had said he would love to have mentored you guys, because he'd be at the hotel till 5 a.m. Yeah. Would you like to see a few more guest mentors come in as, as the season goes on? Do you think that would be helpful to yeah. the crop of contestants? I definitely think that would be helpful. Randy's great. Um, it's funny, because Randy always like says exactly what the judges say mm-hmm. um, uh, at different, like, in the interviews with Randy and then the interviews with the judges, like, they're, they're both, like, very similar. Right. Um, but it, it's cool to have, like, Someone like one on one, like who can like come up and he talks to us and hangs out with us and and he's there with with our in our rehearsals and not, not just for the performances. Okay. Um, what do you do with this exposure? <laughs> like, what what do you see as your next step post Idol tour? Um, I want to make an album. Uh, I definitely think that would be my next step. I I would love to make an album. And we saw sort of an acoustic folky side of you, but also a, a real pull towards. Soul R and B yeah. music. Do you think is there a place to fuse these things together, or do you have to pick one side or the other for for the future? I don't know. I mean, I would like to not have to pick one or the other. I mean, I would just. I. I mean, I think R and B. I love R and B, and I love singing it. Um, I think that's like. I don't know. I don't. I can say which one I love more. I love folk rock and I love R and B, and I love singing both of them. And it's like they're so opposite. It's like the weirdest combination of things to want to sing, but right. I, it's. I don't know. I love them both. Well, we'll have to see what comes together on your album if these two worlds can collide, like like chocolate and peanut butter, or whatnot. I'll I'll do like a folk R and B album. That'd be pretty cool. Well, we appreciate you coming in today. Wish you the best of luck going forward. Thanks Thanks so much. And thank you, Internet, for being with us today. I hope this uh, Google Hangout format pleased you. You will let us know in the comments. I am so sure. Thanks. Don't stop broadcast. I'm in total control. Hit the stop broadcast button.